Hi beginner orchestra students, this is Mrs. Slominski, and I'm making a video for you about our ide big ideas from week three. And this is especially if you want to review our big ideas, or if you as a student want to show mom or dad who or whoever you live with what we've been doing. Um, it can also be a big help to just reinforce the things that you know if you think you forgot something. Um, there will be times in these videos where I might have you play along with me, but a lot of this will just be um, kind of a review of what our lesson was. And um, all right, so week three as beginners, we've been doing a lot of things, just getting close, uh, learning our routines in orchestra about how we get ready and set up. If you are playing sitting down, you wanna make sure that your stand is at the perfect height, or when you look straight out, you are looking just at the middle of the stand. Okay, you don't wanna be bending your body or doing anything weird to be able to see your music. Make sure you're all set up. Violins, violas, make sure you have your sponge or shoulder rest on. If you play cello or bass, make sure that your instrument is at the right height. In this video, I'll be playing each of the instruments just so you see it's a quick recap and a view of what does this look like on each instrument. Play especially close attention to your instrument, but you can also learn from others. So our big target of today was, or two targets, I can make strong tunnels with my left hand fingers. So far, we've only been playing notes that are open strings, meaning, meaning that we are not pressing down fingers yet, okay? But today was the day that we're learning that. We start by making this round, strong shape like this and making sure it's tight enough, we're pinching hard enough, that we can't break that. That's how strong we'll have to, pull the, to press down, and that's also the shape. Notice this big round soccer ball shape? This is not a good shape for a soccer ball or for a tunnel. That's easy to break, it's not very strong, much stronger like this, okay? You can try it with each of your fingers. This is a left hand job. Our right hand is always in the squirt gun position, our sound maker. No matter what instrument you play, your right hand's the sound maker. Your left hand is gonna be helping to pinch the strings and make new notes. So test that. Try to, hopefully you can't break your, that, that strong circle, that strong tunnel. All right, the second target is about pinching the string to actually make these new notes. And the key is to do it with a clear bell tone. Okay, so you could press down on any string to make some new notes. But today is all about the D string. You can noodle around, you can try things on your other strings, but the things that we're studying and that we wanna know really well, D string. Okay, I'm gonna grab a viola here and just to show. Violins and violas. We also learned about rest position, where you have your right arm out, you can cross uh, your instrument over your, underneath your arm, and hold on with your right hand, right? Your left hand is free to get stuck to that gold tape. This is called rest position or guitar position. And here, it can be a little bit easier to see what you're doing. Wiggle that pointer finger, that's finger one, Try to plop that down on D string on the gold tape, okay? If you pinch that tight enough and pluck that same string, here we can do it with our thumb. This is a clear bell sound, it's ringing out. This is not a clear bell sound. It's kind of buzzy or fuzzy. Two things that you can do to help that out. Make sure that you are doing that round shape. Now, on our instrument, we're not actually pressing our, our finger to the actual thumb, but we are pressing it into the fingerboard, this long black part, okay? Pinching the string against the fingerboard, okay? With that clear bell sound. So making sure you have the right shape and also pinching tight enough, okay? For violins and violas, your next action is to add finger two. These fingers stack. Here's what it sounds like with two fingers, okay, with three fingers. All right, cool. On violins and viols, it looks very similar. 
Um, if you're, you could do that in gu guitar position or rest position, you could also move that on top of your shoulder. When we do it this way, we usually slide our hand down and we are double checking that our thumb lands. Okay, here we go. Oh, it's hard to get this in. Okay. Checking that when our hand slides down, our thumb lands by this gold tape and our thumb is just peeking over the top. We talked about our pirate thumb, just peeking over the top, not like this, not like that, like this. And then try adding those fingers again. Okay. So you can see kind of both angles there. Nice and tall fingers. Just like that, so you can get that clear bell sound. Now that's been a little bit more specific to violins and violas. On cellos it's, and basses, it's much the same idea. It looks a little bit different. For cellos, you wanna make sure again that we've done our nose check when we stand tall. Oh, I need to make my cello a little shorter. Glad I checked. Okay, when you stand tall and your cello stands tall, the scroll comes just underneath your nose. Okay, when you sit, We've learned about our pebble space, the space on top of our shoulder going up to the bottom of our scroll right here. Should be about as tall as you can stretch your fingers. Pebbles was my pet gerbil when I was nine, ten years old. So think of this little critter sitting on your shoulder. You don't want to squash, you don't want to overfeed. Okay, then neither of those is good. And then for both cellos and basses, they start with this big round C shape and they're gonna be putting their thumb on this fuzzy spot on the back of the neck. It's also right across from the second finger tape. Okay, so thumb there, one on gold. They practice stacking fingers on D string, just like that. Okay, clear bell sound on a cello, on a bass. Bass. These instruments are really big. They're awesome. This is what I play in an orchestra. Uh, bass players always check that they are balancing their bass on their hip. Back this up a little bit. Okay. So they're balancing their bass on their hip. Well, if you know a bass player, have them show you <laughs> what this looks like. Okay. And they too have a fuzzy thing on the back planting their first finger on their D string. The big fat strings just take a lot of effort there. Cool. So that's some clear bell tones on a bass. Again, if it's fuzzy or buzzy, especially finger four, make sure that you're getting your big round shape and that you're pinching tight. Um, your fingers will probably hurt. They will hurt, guaranteed. They're gonna hurt for the first couple of days that you do this, but keep going. Um, maybe take a few minutes to practice each, each day or like a couple minutes, take a break, come back and play some more so that you build up some more strength and build up some calluses on your fingertips. It won't hurt very much next week, promise. Okay, that has been how to make a clear bell tone on your instrument. Thanks for tuning in.